real estate market of 2022 has been a major story on a national scale, on a local scale. It seems like every other day we're seeing headlines that the market is crashing, the bubble is bursting, which begs the question, is the market actually crashing? Is what we're seeing right now a combination of high interest rates and seasonality mixed together while in Austin, we're gonna see some eye-opening statistics that show seasonality might be playing a big role in what we're seeing right now. First, let's check out an article that Redfin just came out with that shows home price is cooling fastest in pandemic boom towns like Austin and Boise. Yes, of course, Austin and Boise have been in some of the biggest headlines as far as best cities to move to, biggest booming cities during the pandemic. Well, now they're in it for the wrong reasons. We're seeing that home prices are slowing the fastest in some of these boom towns. Phoenix was another one that was on the list. So what they came up with was they looked at price per square foot uh, year over year from February of 2022 and October of 2022. So in Austin, the median price per square foot increased only 1.3% year over year this October. The good sign there is we're still seeing a positive number. So deceleration of home prices is really the term we want to focus on here as opposed to just decreasing of home prices. Take a look at this chart of some of the other cities that were included in here. Austin, Phoenix was at the top of the list. San Jose actually saw negative year-over-year -year price growth in October. Oakland was another city that saw negative year-over-year -year price growth. And in Boise, it was a break even. All the other cities on here were still saw positive price increases year over year in that median uh, price per square foot. However, the drop from February to now was a little bit bigger. So in this article, they also point out that Phoenix, Austin, Las Vegas were among the top metros that saw the most new residents in 2021. We felt it here. As soon as things started easing, opening up, people were flocking to Austin, fleeing to Austin. And we know that Tesla, Apple, all these big companies, these big tech companies announcing uh, whether they're moving their headquarters here or big hiring uh, sprees here in Austin. That was bringing a lot of people here as well. In fact, in those three cities, we saw about a 30% gain in the last two years in home prices, which has been huge and almost a shock to uh, Austin in general because of that unsustainable growth that we saw over that time. Now I'm gonna read a quote from this article from the Redfin senior economist. I hope I don't get this name wrong, Shahari or Bakari. So they said that home prices can only rise by double digits for so long before the growth becomes unsustainable. High rates and stumbling tech stocks are making it unsustainable quite quickly, especially in destinations popular with tech workers. Plus many of the out-of-towners with big budgets who wanted to move into those places already have. Now for Austin, some of this is true. I don't think we've seen the end of this mass migration to Austin, although I don't think it's going to be anywhere close to what it was over the last couple of years. Now, in videos all throughout the year, even last year, I used the term unsustainable quite often because the growth we were seeing was unsustainable. It had to cool down. And I knew that as soon as things started slowing down, we were going to see uh, it was going to feel like more of a drastic change than some of these other cities that were also seeing slowdowns for things like rising interest rates, buyer demand weakening, and seasonality. So now let's jump into the seasonality discussion. We're in a time of year in Austin in particular, where the market typically slows down. As a matter of fact, I took a look from 2014 up to 2019, because I want to keep it all pre-pandemic. So it's two years, 2020, 2021, a little bit of an anomaly. So I took a look at what prices did from May to October, um, as far as median sales price over those years. So check out some of these charts. In 2014, we saw a 3% dip. 2015, a 6% dip. 2016, 3%. 2017, 6% dip. 2018, a 3.5% dip. And in 2019, we actually saw a 1% increase from May to October, and that was really the start. And I think it's safe to say that Austin, the buzz it was getting, the popularity, from 2017, 2018, 19 only was increasing. So that number doesn't shock me much. So over that time span from 2014 to 2019, that was about an average of a 3.4% dip from May to October prices, which shows seasonality is pretty, it is pretty normal for us to see a dip in those prices. But you fast forward to 2022, we saw 550 sales price, uh, median sales price in May, 474,990 in October. So we saw around a 14% decrease from May median sales price to October. This is, you know, blows every other one of those years out of the water. 
but we're also in a time where interest rates doubled in the year. So let's take a, a look at a few other charts. These charts are from Redfin's Market Data Center and it shows the Austin Metro. Take a look at the uh, median sales price, which this graph, it almost looks like you're going down a, a big roller coaster um, from May all the way till now. And we've said that the median sales price year over year has still been hovering. We haven't quite crossed that threshold into negative price growth, but last month we finally saw that slight dip of a 1% dip under the median sales price this time last year. The real question is over the next month or so, what are we gonna see? Is it gonna level off? Is it gonna go up? Is it gonna continue going down? How far under that median sales price are we going to dip? And I think it's safe to say as we move into the spring, we will see that uh, median sales price stay below the year over year price growth be negative because of that such a drastic price increase over the months in spring of uh, 2022. So we will see that big gap for the beginning of 2023, in my opinion. But as price growth starts to normalize in 2023, we'll see that gap get smaller and smaller and eventually might cross that threshold back to positive year over year growth. Take a look at these last two charts, which this one shows new listings in Austin following the trajectory of last year, where we've seen a massive drop off. A lot of sellers out there are not looking to sell right now. They're locked into low interest rates. They don't want to buy into the market and get take on a higher interest rate, or they're just looking at it and saying, if I don't have to move, I'm not going to right now. So big drop in um, new listings, and then take a look at active listings, which were up at a peak just in the last couple months. We're finally starting to see that trend uh, dip a little, which again, seasonally, we see this often, but it seems like it's been up like this in Austin for the last several months. And finally, we're starting to see some relief in terms of active listings dropping. So what does this all mean for you as a buyer, for you as a seller? As a seller, you still need to be looking at this as the first question you're asking yourself, do I have to sell? Because there's still a lot of competition out there, although we're seeing less homes are coming on, so the competition, competition is decreasing. If you're looking to buy in the market right now, we've seen rates uh, over the last few weeks kind of hover in the sixes, in the, the mid to high sixes, they dipped a little bit to lower sixes last week. We're seeing buyer demand pick up on our end. Our phones are ringing more, we're getting more emails, people saying, all right, ready to get back into the market. So they see the opportunities of lots of homes out there, still buyer demand is weak and interest rates have dipped to a point where you buy it down, buy down your rate, whether you do a three, two, one buy down, a two, one buy down, a full term buy down, and you can really get a monthly payment that makes more sense for your budget. That's what we're here for to answer those questions. And if you're looking for a deeper dive into what the market has been doing recently, check out this video over here, where I break down several of the counties, several of the different market reports that just came out from the Austin Board of Realtors. Hope you found this info helpful. Catch you on the next one.